Hey everyone, welcome to It's All Good All Right here on Rebellious Ufology. I don't know why I just copied Enzo, but I did. It happened. Hey How Enzo, you copied Thanks it. for being here. <laughs> Was he throwing money away now? He is, <laughs> it's raining money over at Enzo's place. <laughs> yeah. Fall, falling out of Lynn's pocket, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Keep him away, keep him away from the slot machines, huh? That's what I heard, man. That's, I'm gonna get that's, where, that's where I got that money from. That's uh... that's amazing. Wow. So you guys were both in Vegas at the same time, and I missed yep. it. I'm so bummed, but I bet you guys had a it, great time. It was it was a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> boy, you talk you talk about a parade of interesting looking people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was I was sitting there with Dave. And uh, I think the uh, UFO garage guys and a couple of the others and something walked by and I know it's, it's, it's cruel, but all I said was, that's the missing link. <laughs> I mean, I, I, <laughs> I looked at this person. I said, oh my goodness. Uh, oh, Chad Smith is, is here with us tonight too. It, it looks like. Welcome. Uh, Oh, I meant to say, uh, Kashi Chris is here. Hi, Kashi Chris. She's Hi, driving Kashi home, Chris. I think, right now. Yep. So where were we off to tonight? Well, we talk I thought, let's talk about what everybody else is going to be talking about, because we can't avoid it. These congressional hearings, they start tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. 9 a.m., as you said. So, yeah, I thought they were starting at 10, but I looked, and then you said they moved. Why did they move it up early? Do we know? Yeah, because the, the, I knew I'd probably still be asleep. <laughs> They're like, no, yeah, we're, 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 we're trying to sneak this under the wire. Those, <laughs> yeah. those, those weird UFO people don't get up this early, do they? Oh, we do. No, <laughs> we, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Before that starts, we watch we watch the night sky. I mean, you got to you know, you got to get your rest somewhere. Some of us do. Some yeah. of us do it in the morning. <laughs> get yeah. up and do a show in the morning. I mean, Alien Girl, she's on at seven a.m. Eastern. It's crazy. Which, yeah. by the way, she told me to tell you hi, and I hear. She said, I think it was at Disclosure Con, she still owes you a dance because she was supposed to give you a dance or like dance with you, but then I think she went off to bed or something. <laughs> <laughs> so she goes, he probably won't remember. I said, well, if you promised him a dance, he probably will. So that, that's one thing I love doing more than anything is dancing, rock and roll, swing, I love it. you know, 50s, funk, disco, you name it. Um, I'm not, in, I'm not into heavy metal or stuff, but. Uh, but I've always loved music. I learned how to you know, dance with my mom when I started, when about four or five years old. And it was big band, and then rock and roll came into uh, the scene. 
And nothing funnier to watch a five-year-old kid with his mom doing, you know, swing dancing. That's always a lot of fun. Because she was, she was, she was short. She was a typical uh, Sicilian mom. She was five foot by, uh, later on, five foot by five foot. But she was, uh, <laughs> uh, she was. I wouldn't trade my mom for for all the money that Bill Gates, uh, mm. uh, Elon Musk, and Jeff Be uh, Bezio have. Mm -hmm. um, she was. Everybody loved my mom. Aww. Everybody loved my mom, and it was just she was. I had a I had a wonderful childhood. Turned into a juvenile delinquent, but she, yeah, she she didn't have it. You know, she had no blame uh, on that part. That was it. Was all me. It <laughs> was all you, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's shocking. Shocking yes. to hear. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now, now the the thing I mean, I was hoping when when the other report was going to come out, and it was all this anticipation. What they used. I went back five, six years, and that was it. How about the hundred plus years, or maybe the thousand plus years that we have evidence of, you know, people other than us, you know, mm -hmm. arriving here, doing things, incredible things. I mean, I, I still, I still look at, you know, anytime I see a, you know, petroglyph or a, you know, uh, you know, in any any of the ancient uh, markings on walls or in temples and and such, it just uh, you know, it, it, and it shows, I mean, it shows real life. I mean, flying saucers, just like you and I have, you know, have seen drawings of and, mm -hmm. and seen photos of, uh, and I, and I know our government, it has stuff that would, bro would probably blow us all out of the water. I mean, it's yeah, just yeah. the, uh, yeah, one of them, I, and it was a crew member that I talked to, and this goes back years ago. And, he was on an RB 36. You know, I, I don't think they were flying out of Isleson. God forbid. I don't know anybody wanted to fly out of that place <laughs> other than to leave. And uh, it, it, well, it depends on where you're going. If you're doing a day trip, are oh, you going there. to Shimia? Okay, I'll you stay at Isleson. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've been to I, I've been to Shimia once, yep. right. and we <laughs> almost didn't make it. We were yeah, in a, that's a we, dangerous place to go in and out of. And and someone people who don't know where Shimmy, Alaska is, it's actually closer to Tokyo than it is to Anchorage. Oh wow. And it's yeah. if you follow the Aleutian chain out, it's like the next to the last fourth, island. I think. Fourth island from the end. Okay, the fourth wow. uh, Attu is after that, and then there's two small little uh, uh islands. But we I was asking some crypto gear from Elmendorf to Shimmy. We stopped at ADAC first, dropped off some Navy people. And we were in a C-124. You know how wonderful those airplanes are mm -hmm. if you go back that far. Mm. And um, we were just past the point of no return. And the number three prop goes wild and then leaves the airplane. It didn't hit the fuselage, thank Good. God. But it oh broke God. the top motor mount and the engine is dangling down like this. Now, a C-124 needs all four 28 cylinder engines going full blast to stay in the air. Thanks. So immediately the loadmaster came back along with the flight engineer and he said, he, they identified things that we couldn't throw out radios primarily. He said, everything else other than the crypto gear goes out, the life rafts, the, you know, their survival suits, everything. Now this is midsummer. So the, the, I asked the I asked the loadmaster. I said, "Hey, we're th we're throwing out our life rafts and throwing out uh, our survival suits." He said, "Yeah." I said, "Well, what happened?" He says, "Well, during the winter, if you hit the water, the water is like twenty six degrees. Uh, you would last maybe thirty seconds before you go into hypothermia. But since this is midsummer." It lasts about 45 seconds because the water is probably up to 28, maybe 29 degrees. Well, that makes I mean, sense. and you're you're 1,500 miles from the closest place that can rescue you. So by the time they got there, you're a big popsicle. I mean, you're just <laughs> you're frozen. So we're, we're finally the engine breaks off, and we're all worried about engine number three, which is gone. We didn't realize engines number one and two were pumping over so much oil that when we as we're heading into Shimia. Shimmy, it gets eight hours of sunshine a year, not a day, a year. Hmm. The clouds parted. It was like God looked down and said, I don't want to kill these guys this week. 
and just the sky opened up and we landed, but all the fire trucks were going on the, on the left-hand side of the airplane. We were concerned about the missing engine on the right-hand side. Turns out the engines were pumping over so much oil when they slowed down near taxiing, it caught on fire. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so that airplane was there for about four months, I think, to get it back in the flying condition. And I flew back two days later on a C-119. Non-pressurized. I mean, you can see you can see daylight through some of the fuselage cracks as mm -hmm. as we're rumbling at, at it seemed like we were only going about 20 miles an hour, but we were probably doing you know, about 115, 120. Hey. Hi Andy, how's it going? Welcome to the show. <laughs> so that's yeah, that's Shimia. It's way the hell out there. It's it's uh, like I say, it's the fourth island from the end. It's closer to yep. Tokyo. And guys who worked out of they flew out of uh, Eielson and uh, the sixth strategic reconnaissance wing. And they flew they flew RC one thirty fives, the hog hog nose one thirty fives as we call them. And uh, they I know Cobra Ball spent a lot of time at Shimia. Oh yeah. And uh, did you ever see Cobra Eye when you were? Oh you were yes. In? Oh yeah, yes. I was I was at E Systems when they were uh, finishing the mods. I got a tour of it. A buddy of mine was a line chief there, and that was interesting. Very, very unique aircraft. The uh, optics main primary optics package on it was so sensitive that it couldn't look through even the cleanest piece of glass. So they made like a sort of like the sliding door on the side of a cargo van on mm -hmm. the side of the fuselage, so it was open to the atmosphere because any even the cleanest glass it would pick up all the you know the imperfections yeah yeah wow. yeah well it's, it's the same as the that sophie the uh 747 sp that they're flying out of palmdale mm -hmm. that you know it's, it's like a garage door it, it opens up and here's this uh you know, it's, it's almost what 48 inch primary mirror on that or it's pretty big it's, it's a really good size big. one yeah. and it's stabilized Red, oh, the, you were the Red Horse Squadron, okay? What is that? I, I used to, I used to, from the air, in the Air Force, we referred to, referred to it as a, you know, their, their construction battalion. Hmm. They go in there and uh, uh, build stuff. Oh, if, cool. know, someone's coming into a location uh, that's hasn't had anybody there before. They'll send in a, a, a Red Horse, sort of, Horse group. At least that's my that's my understanding of Red Horse. Right. So. Sort of like the, the Navy version, like the CBs and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah. It was a, a construction battalion. Yeah. Drop yeah. them off in the middle of nowhere with nothing there and like build a runway. It's like, that, this is true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, you know, one, it got me off track, but I was saying that a uh, gentleman I had met at when I was with the Museum of Flight was a flight engineer in B-36s. And he said he was on an RB-36 flight. He didn't say where, mm -hmm. but he said they were flying in formation with uh, a handful of discs and guys were taking pictures of them with, you know, a four by eight Graflex camera you know, mm -hmm. out through the bubble. So, and they were a couple hundred feet away. I mean, oh, yeah, really? close enough. So, you know, you could, you could, with a good camera, you could uh, you can see the grain in the in the metal on, of the fuselage. Yeah. I mean, it's wow, uh, and that's stuff that that the government has, and they've been you know they've been uh, rat holed it, and it's probably the same type of storage facility that Raiders of the Lost Ark were in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. it covers about <laughs> ten square miles, and yeah. and uh, you need GPS location to find it. I mean, it's. Uh, and I, and I, and there's, I, I, I really, I really won't say, say the person's name cause I haven't, I haven't verified it with her, but uh, there was a, there's a lady in this community that back in the, I think in the seventies was given a truckload of, of stuff to go through and do a documentary to show the world that, yeah, we're, we're not alone. This is the proof, you know, we've been visited. This is what they look like. This is, Mm -hmm. And about uh, she, she, the person was just starting putting everything together and the feds came in and uh, mm -hmm. how's it going? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the feds came in, paid the person the entire amount and then took everything and left. He said no explanation. And it was a, it was a tidy sum, 
They wow. figured it was going to take about a year for them to, you know, to go through everything and, and sort. Um, so the, the information is there. And, mm -hmm. and maybe, maybe, like I've said it before, maybe we're not, maybe we're not the ones that are in charge of releasing the information. They may have, there may be something more sinister or something that we, we may not understand. And I, and it's just, but it's, it's time. It's, it's time that, you know, let's cut out, let's cut out the crap. Let's cut out the double talk. Let's uh, cut out the in, innuendos. Let's just, Hey, let's do something really unique for the government. Let's tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I know that's that's that sounds really radical and bizarre, right? But it's about time. <laughs> they they allegedly work for us, we the people. Allegedly, Alleg right, allegedly. Yeah. Uh, and but you hear some of these idiots on on the on the news, and we're paying their salaries. I know. I mean, would they have to back up to the pay window because you know you couldn't look at the paymaster straight in the eye if you had to. Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, it's do you, Jim. Do you get the sense that uh, this is almost like force? Like maybe there's a timeline or something like this? Because suddenly, just you know, a few years ago, bam, here it all is. Wow, we got to get stuff. Look, you know, garnered a lot of attention, a lot of drives to get uh, you know, uh, you know, some kind of investigation going from the federal government, which uh, apparently we now have. We're going to hear a little bit about tomorrow. Uh, I wouldn't get my hopes well, up too high, but uh, yeah, what, one of, yeah, one of the things that uh, people never like to give up is is power. Oh yeah, and now, if you if you are in a group of individuals in our government for the people by the people. Uh, yeah, you know, giving up, uh, allowing something that you have held close to your heart because it's classified. Oh, God forbid we can't. It affects national security. How? Yeah. I mean, if if it's if you need as many eyes out there as possible to determine whether or not, hey, are we being attacked or whatever? Uh, then then how is it keeping it close to your chest? Especially when you didn't, you know, we didn't develop it. Maybe we're using some of the technology, but we didn't, we didn't, we didn't develop UFOs. They have helped us do many, many things. Uh, yeah, and I have to agree. You know, we have to keep our <laughs> expectations <laughs> the lowest they've ever been, right. and that's right. pretty. That's pretty low considering all the you know, cooperation we've got from the government. But it's just. Yeah. Those those particular individuals that control the security, that's power. Yeah. And people don't willingly just give up power just for it. Well, we, we, we can see it for national security, but really it's my own power trip that I want to keep everything away from. Mm hmm That's right, because that, it's knowledge and knowledge is power. Because if they have yeah, understanding of yeah. something that other people don't, they can use this to their advantage. Yeah. I mean, I have, I have a, a friend of mine who was, or still is, I think, works for the National Security Agency. Yeah. And when uh, Tucker Carlson and, and the government spokesman said, there are, there are craft flying in our airspace, not from this earth. Mm -hmm. So I, I sent an email to the person. I said, hey, do you believe in UFOs? And I got an, I mean, she was the other side of the world. Mm -hmm. I got an immediate response. He said, did you see one? I said, no. <laughs> he says, oh, I can't make any comment here, but they're here. <laughs> oh, no, wait, no, wait. Okay, hold on. Wait, who was this person? I have a friend of mine who works the National Security Agency as an analyst. Interesting. And uh, she's. So did you ever get anything more out of her? I have to do it face to face. So I know where she's going to retire. It's a her. Mm -hmm. I, I know where she's going to retire. And it's a place I'm going to be going because I like it. Um, and I'll sit down with her and okay. see if she'll see if she'll do a taped interview. Yeah, that would be awesome! Wow. Find out what they have to say. Um, so, if she would go it's, on record, I don't know. Some of the times they won't. It. it uh, I don't. I don't know if they. You know, they. They. They can't fire somebody for 
saying something after they retired unless it was something that were they were briefed on and they signed this little piece of paper that yeah, yeah I give up my soul and my right. rights right. my rights to life if I violate <laughs> this stupid requirement. But that's yeah, you know, that's something that's there. Um, uh. but uh and said, you know, you you recall the name of the Israeli scientists? I think it was an or an astronomer, something way up in the food chain, mm -hmm. when they were talking about uh, re why information has not been released so far, and it, and the was, and person said, we're not ready for it. Right. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. recall. His, I, I actually looked that up not that long ago, but that was the same story where he referred to a possible like Galactic Federation and. Yeah. Uh, if we're talking about the yeah. same thing, yeah, uh, yeah, it's Hayima yeah. Shed. Yeah, yeah, and 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 I have to, I have to go back to uh, what I build my my foundation on, and that's people like Ben Rich and and Dave Fruhoff who chased one in an SR, and my old boss, Major General Wayne Gatlin, who chased chased one in an F ninety four C, and those people. I mean, they, they're not going to, they're not going to just willy nilly say, well, gee, I saw a UFO and this is what it did. Mm. Uh, you know, Dave changed his, changed his tune after uh, I reported what he said. And he, he, he seemed to have a memory lapse after that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I mean, it is what it is. And he, he, uh, he wanted to maintain his status in the, in the, in the, black community not not african-american black i'm talking about mm. top secret black yeah and uh, but he was uh, uh he ended up being a facility manager at area 51. Mm. so i asked him about the underground facilities he said they he wasn't aware of any and he went he was looking i mean he was here for five years as mm. facility manager mm. and he was responsible for everything from a paint locker to the largest hangar yeah. And he was also responsible for all the non-program aircraft. He did a lot of uh, photo chase on half blue and uh, early F-117 shots, flights. So, but he looked, uh, he, uh, he inquired because you had to be real careful when you're in that community if you start asking questions. Ange. How's it going, Ange? Uh, so it's just, uh, we're, getting lot, we're getting a lot of... Is there a basement in Area Fifty One? Something about a basement? No, I mean, I no, I, I asked, I asked Dave if, if there's any un underground facilities at Area Fifty One, and mm. he said no. no. Hmm. He said we mm -hmm. have the technology just on the other side of the Papoose Range, uh, where they can they can cut through uh, solid granite about a foot an hour, and we're talking about a thirty six mm -hmm. foot diameter cut. Yeah, it's pretty fast, actually. Yeah. <laughs> And, and you got to you have to put that stuff somewhere, right? So did they melt it and that sort of created the uh, you know a glass type wall, whatever mm. it is, uh, versus uh, turn it in you know turn it into you know landfill. The other thing, there has to be a an entrance somewhere, probably well hidden. But but if if it's if there's an entrance, there's got to be a road. Even if it's camouflaged under certain lights, it, it will show up. Mm -hmm. I know there's uh, Lear, John Lear used to talk about, uh, he referred to as the Sandia base, sort of halfway in between Tonopah Test Range and Area 51. Mm -hmm. He said, you could fly right over the field and not even know it's there. And, and the, way they, uh, the way they identified it, most everything is underground. Hmm. Uh, and the way they, uh, they illuminate it is they, uh, they have a sprinkler system on it. They hit it with water. All of a sudden, it shows up. Uh, and, and you can land, and of course, and it evaporates fairly fast. But it's a, and there's supposed to be an underground facility near uh, uh, Dugway. Hmm. There, were, there were some uh, private pilots who saw something come out of the ground, something very huge. Uh, but then they were met by a couple of F-15s or F-16s out of hill. Uh, where, where are you going? Oh, just out for a Sunday ride in our airplane. <laughs> Why? Uh, am I over a restricted area? No. Have you seen anything unusual? What, are, what, are, what am I supposed to be looking for? I mean, they saw some unusual, with it, but they weren't going to say it on the air. Exactly. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, so easy. Yeah. I hate to live at hell. 
there's just there's just way too much. So what what's your, what's your opinion, Enzo? About underground bases or uh, UFOs? Oh, just UFOs in general. I think they've definitely been around for a while. I mean, uh, uh, the, I, I feel as far as like we're talking about the government thing for tomorrow, uh, it seems like they're it's they're doing the slow build up to something. Whether it goes the route of uh, well, these are dangerous, so you need to keep giving uh, the defense industry more money. Or the slower, you know, maybe the along with that, the other buildup of full disclosure, which would probably come much later of, you know, the rediscovery of these things and ignoring everything that we've already know that they have records of. I mean, just from your story earlier that the, they have uh, a lot of recordings and documentation on it. Uh, going back, you know, 80 years, I get the impression that no matter who the president is, whatever administration is in office, they don't want to be the one to say, oh, yeah, by the way, we've been lying to you for the last 80 years because they're done after that. Well, Barry Goldwater, when he was uh, uh, senator from the state of Arizona, where I call home, and he was, you know, he was running for, he was in 64, he was uh, running for president against Lyndon Johnson. And Barry Goldwater was the first, for the person really to, I, you may even say he created MUFON. Hmm. Because he's, he started the very first UFO interest group in, in Phoenix back in the 50s. And he was a real strong proponent of UFOs. They're real. They're here. And he said, "If you know, when I when I become uh, if, if if elected, I become president. I'm gonna release everything on on UFOs." Well, apparently they they gave him a briefing, and from that point forward, he he denied he ever started or even was a member of this UFO group. Jimmy Carter said the same thing. He was in the release information. Ronald Reagan said the same thing. But the one thing that Ronald Reagan did say, and he said it in Iceland when he was with Gorbachev, talking about, you know, about Star Wars, you know, the strategic okay. defense initiative. And he said, the thing about this, we can point it outward to protect us from an invasion from alien beings. Hmm. That was in his, I don't know if that was the correct wording he used, but that was in his pre-approved text to be read. And of all the opposition that uh, the U.S. has had about all sorts of things that we've done, because we're such an evil bunch of bastards here, <laughs> uh, the, uh, no one, absolutely no one has had anything negative or even hostile to say about uh, Star Wars, SDI. Mm -hmm. Because it's 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 a common de a common defense. I mean, if 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 the aliens want to wipe us out, well, they're not. They have, whether you're a capitalist or whether you're a communist or whether you're you know, regardless of what you are, you know, if if we're if our existence is threatened, so is yours, yeah. right? So I think that's one of that's one of the things that sort of tempered the the attitudes of of countries all over the world. I mean, people countries that would normally protest us just for breathing. Oh, the imperialist Americans, trash, scum of the earth. Well, without us, a lot of you countries would still be living, you know, in caves after World War One or World War Two. So don't hand me this crap. <laughs> I don't know. I just I get I get irritated at uh, you know some of the idiots that are out there so there's a lot of idiots but, out there and again like you mentioned earlier it's uh, all about their little kingdoms and fiefdoms and power mm. they they, yeah. they can control this little piece of it and it's mine and nobody's taking it away i mean and with everybody i'm talking about even you know five and six year old kids have smartphones with incredibly good cameras on it uh, same with our military people out, you know, on, on uh, not, you know, probably only on submarines where you wouldn't be getting a good shot of anything. <laughs> but, you know, surface combatants, aircraft carriers, I mean, when they're, you know, the Nimitz, uh, you know, the, Ron, the Ronald Reagan, the, the uh, even way back in the 50s, the, uh, the, you know, the FDR, 
apparently had a lot of encounters with uh, unknowns. Mm -hmm. And all this stuff is documented. It's all there. It's all someone has their finger on do not share you know, button. And it's, it's, yeah. it's, I don't know, I just want to jump up and down and scream sometimes. Release the, uh, release the crick on the Krakens, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah. It, it I does just, seem like, and we've even heard like actual news stories here the last several months about how the intelligence community has been complaining about how everything has been classified and so compartmentalized that nobody has access to anything, even yeah. stuff that would be vital for, you know, national security, like right now, sharing of information, you know, and going and you, when you go back in time, it finds out, oh, well, it turns out this department was investigating these people and then they did a, mm -hmm. a, a bad thing. And uh, you find out, it's like, well, wait a minute, because they're so cut off from each other. It kind of makes me wonder that even some of these black programs may have gotten lost in that shuffle somehow to where... Mm -hmm nobody's really there's no oversight they're just kind of out there i wouldn't be surprised some lonely uh guard base somewhere has some small hangar that has all the goods in it but it's <laughs> it's all yeah. locked up and yeah. secure do not go in here until ordered by this person who died 20 years ago and yeah. uh it just gets and, lost the time and and a lot of a lot of the way some of the security uh rules or regulations were written uh back you know in the last 50 years the, the, the only person or persons that can declassify something is the group that had it classified. Oh, really? So, and so if, if you were responsible for classifying, you know, a UFO, you know, chasing an RC-135 and they have incredible images of this thing and they even shot it with, you know, one of the, you know, the Cobra ball or Cobra eye birds when it was coming towards them and it's high resolution and it's right in your face and you're the one who had it was responsible for the classification and you drop over dead the way some of the the classification laws are written only you can declassify it yes so there's no contingency that if the person's dead no no it's it's the it's the burn before reading group who's okay. responsible right. for this Wow, and and the only the only way it's going to happen is is Congress is going to have to act, mm -hmm. but <clears throat> that's like <clears throat> telling San Francisco or San Franciscans you can't poop on the side. It's <laughs> it's a really good idea, but probably nothing's going to become of it. I I kind of wonder if that's why we all of a sudden are getting a lot of that stuff over the last few years mm. that those as much as i hate to use the term those those gatekeepers of all of this knowledge uh finally passed away and when somebody moved into their office and started looking through some files in the filing cabinet going what, what the is hell is this? this yeah yeah and uh you know we started getting those trickles of information <laughs> out from them, so see lulu agrees that was ralphie, oh, <laughs> ralphie. the yeah. crazy old one <laughs> It'd be nice about that. Yeah. <laughs> I think you might have been talking about us, Jim. I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, I, I got a lot of years on you, Enzo. So. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of decades. Um, but I don't know. It's just, uh, it, it's going to get to a point where you can't hide it anymore. And I don't, I don't know how that's going to come, come out. The, uh, the, the, and I don't know how long that the sessions are going to, they start tomorrow morning. Are they going to go on just for a day? Oh, I haven't, I haven't paid much attention to it because I don't want to be disappointed again on what our governments is said they were going to do. And then the lying bastards decided not to do what they said they were going to do. And let me see, I'll look and see while you guys, can we yeah. not? I kind of was under the impression while, well, while Lynn's looking at that, that for tomorrow, my, my take on it would be that it's mostly going to be conversations about the new program that they just stood up, uh, which just mm. got signed in in December. So that's not a lot of time for setting anything up right now. I would imagine it's mostly going to be briefing. OK, we've designed this database. We're training these people out in the field on how to report on these things and what to report. And, uh, and, they and probably, they're all getting, they, and they're all giving the, shock collars. So if they start yeah. to say the wrong thing, you know, <laughs> A tender can press the button or, or a minder, I guess you call it. That's what, that's what the yeah, North Koreans yeah, yeah. call them, minders. Yep. 
This is saying it's only two hours. The two hour hearing starts at nine a.m. Is that right? I'm gonna let me check. No, I think it's there. supposed to. Go, I thought I, I I was under the impression it was going to go all day long. Let's see. I mean, I'll you keep can, you can't even it. you can't even do the introductions in two hours. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, because you have well, all you know. Tell you, you something have, too, though, if that's the case, they don't have a and, whole lot. They're going to tell us. And I, I haven't I haven't heard. Have you heard who's going to be, uh, what Congress critters or senators are going to be on the panel? Yeah, uh, on the, it's just going to be Ronald Moultrie, the Pentagon's top intelligence official, and Scott Bray, deputy director of naval intelligence. Uh, this one is saying two hours as well. I'm just going to keep looking because hmm. yeah. that seems crazy. Well, I know, I know the Navy's responsible for all the really, really spooky stuff. Yeah. Yeah, what Sorry. do you think about that, Jim? Uh, why is the Air Force so quiet in all of this? I don't, I don't, I don't think they uh, they have access to a lot of the information. And way back, at, right after Roswell, everything was controlled by the you know by the Army, right? And somewhere, I think in the early seventies, it uh, it transitioned over to the Navy. And why hmm. exactly? I'm not sure. Uh, you know, the Air Force would be the logical choice. But maybe maybe it has to do with undersea locations as well. Mm. I mean, there's been way too many reports of things coming out of the ocean, coming out of the water, or hitting the water full at full speed and not even making a splash. And I know uh, the W two. I had a Bob Lazar's. He was paid by the United States Navy. Hmm. And I then oh, and I, you know, I told I told you the story about the two star going nuts. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, and it's just uh, hmm. so there's there's some there's something really really sinister about why they're trying to keep it keep the information from us. Hmm. If they were if if UFOs were a threat, if alien beings were a threat. We would have been well aware of it a long time ago, unless, of course, half the members of Congress are aliens. And maybe that will answer some questions. Maybe, Jim, are you getting into the reptilian overlord conspiracy? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Am I? Uh, Might be. <laughs> would explain the bad rep that reptilians get. Uh, I know, right? Politicians. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you're going to make politicians. a. Yeah, I couldn't see why Which is are. worse, a reptilian overlord or generic politician? Generic politician. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of a yeah, yeah, hard question to answer. That's right. for sure. Yeah. It's crazy. It's, well, everything um, I've seen, it's saying two hours. So Two hours? I mean, that, wow. that, then, that, then it's a joke. Well, it, yeah, clearly it's a joke. I, that, what that's they're saying, I, yeah, is that they're going to be going over basically the report that came out last year. And like, but that's about it. Like, it doesn't seem like they're going to be doing a whole heck of a lot. So this is a follow up for that report then on those other uh, whatever hundred or whatever so. things that were unidentified. Let's see. Um, it says do, 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 last year, the Office of the Director of Naval and National Intelligence submitted to Congress a preliminary report. Yada, yada, yada. We know the name of it. Um that helped lay the foundation for tomorrow's hearing on UAP, which will be held under the House Intelligence Committee's Counterterrorism, Counterintelligence, and Counterproliferation Subcommittee. Um, tomorrow's event uh, comes after this. The, that document also called for an annual report and sen- semi-annual briefings. Um, uh, the hearing will feature two top-tier witnesses, Ronald Moultrie and Scott Bray. The new office to look into UAP, uh, the AOI MSG, was created. Yeah, we know that. Um, it's Carson's intent that the hearing, in quotes, will give the American people an opportunity to learn what there is to know about these incidents in two hours. We shall see. <laughs> I don't. I don't see how they can accomplish that. Not in two hours. I mean, you can take two hours just talking about Roswell. Yeah. What yeah. Really happened. Yeah, this says this guy, I don't know who this guy, uh, Mark, oh, I'm going to mispronounce his name, 
Rodiger, Rodiger, the scientific director of the Center for UFO Studies. He basically, they have a quote in here. He says, I'm generally a wait and see mode with respect to the hearings. It's great that any type of hearing on UFOs or UAPs is being held, but two hours will barely scratch, be enough to scratch the surface. Yeah, that's true. I mean, they can't even, they can't even probably do proper introductions of the, of the two uh, witnesses or the two uh, people on the panel. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 if you're gonna if you're gonna look into it, don't do it. I mean that that's what just irritates me about about the federal government is don't do it half-assed. If you're gonna spend the time and the resources and to get everybody excited, why don't we get our money's worth versus having to put up with you know your double speak and your excuses of of why you're not doing this or why you're not doing that? It's just it just irritates the hell out of me. Yeah, and I read. I mean. At at one time, I had written so many letters to congressmen and senators and called their offices. Uh, I remember during the Iranian hostage, uh, uh, 444 days, uh, Senator Rudy Boschewitz, his everybody who answered his phone knew my voice. This is before mm-hmm. caller ID. I'd call up Senator Boschewitz's office. I said, hi there. Oh, Mr. Goodall, what's on your mind today? <laughs> <laughs> and... And uh, uh, I got to the point where they, they you know, they, they literally, they, they did recognize my voice, and and my opinion was heard. But to, you know, and that's, and I don't know, I don't know if it, it would be like uh, you know talking to a brick wall. And I think that's probably you know more the the case in today's world because they don't want to give up any of that power of controlling the information. And that's and that's the name of the game is is power has nothing to do with national security, has nothing to do with mm-hmm. technology, it has nothing to do with the fear of alien invasion. If they want to invade us, if they can go across the universe, all they have to do is zap us a really good one with a EMP, other than the Amish and the Quakers and some uh, Aboriginal tribes in Africa and, and Australia. They wouldn't that they wouldn't know what you know, they wouldn't wouldn't know wouldn't care what happened the rest of us yeah. would be back in the cave you know back in the uh, uh, caveman days that's for darn sure <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean can you can you imagine if a, if an, uh, a hostile alien being could hit us with an with an EMP when everything that we have that runs on ones and zeros they all go to zero? Mm-hmm. Can you imagine the joy it would be? The only people who will be able to drive the car is someone who has like a 49 Studebaker. Right. No and, electronic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and Nancy, it, it, it has a good question. Who is holding on to the power? Yeah. You know, you know, ben Rich said in his, in his comment at uh, UCLA that you know, we have the ability to take ET home. Think mm-hmm. about that. I mean, just think right. about that. He is, he is the most knowledgeable person on the, you know, in the world on, on stuff like that. And he was a firm believer in, in UFOs. He said both he and Kelly Johnson believed in both categories, both man-made and extraterrestrial. And when you have two of the most brilliant minds in aviation saying that, hey, we're not alone, um, that carries a lot of weight with me. Yeah. And it should with it should with the rest you know rest of the world. But but we we have we have the we have the power hungry crazies out there and, and, and until that changes or or they finally say, okay, we're gonna we're just gonna bite the bullet and we're we're gonna throw it all out there. And that's what I'm hoping they'll do. But I doubt seriously, because again, that would be yeah. losing some of their power. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, that would uh, be political suicide for a lot of uh, people that have been around for a while that probably knew about this. It would be it, their their careers done, so they don't they don't want to give that up. I'm kind of there's part of me that kind of wonders that I started thinking about this when uh, they were talking about this briefing coming up for tomorrow is uh, assuming that all that they're not all read in and this is all a sham uh, for our benefit. I I know it uh, that it's. <laughs> Lynn goes after him. She doesn't mess around. But uh, assuming that there are people like in the Senate and uh, Armed Services Committee and stuff like that that aren't fully read in on the goings on in the background, if they start finding out like the things that we kind of almost take for granted that and they're real, mm-hmm. we could almost 
weaponize you know their own arrogance as political leaders to say what do you mean that these things are real i'm on this committee and this intel committee and all this and i don't know about it you're telling me i'm not being given all the information tell me everything you know you know that level of uh craziness could crack the whole thing open because uh then now they're like wait a minute you're hedging it on my power <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. But I think you 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 might not be far off though. Is if if and if it's a big if we ever get any type of disclosure, I think what you were saying earlier about it'll be a newfound disclosure. Well, we just right. discovered these things. That's the only way that I think that they will legitimately be able to go about it. Right? That they yeah. will legitimately be able to go about it without having to take any responsibility for their past actions. It's the only way it's going to be possible. Yep. All, all those old classical records and stuff like that just get memory hold and disappeared. Uh, oh, well, we just found this wreckage a uh, couple of years ago and we only just now figured it out. Mm -hmm. Surprise. You know? Yeah. 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 Or, oh, we found this wreckage might be from Roswell. It's in the basement at Ray Pat. Weird. Yeah, and they we could play the ignorance the thing, like my scenario with you know the hangar that everyone forgot. It's yeah. Like, hey, yeah. Look at this. We were getting ready yeah. to have a DRMO sale, and there's yeah. a saucer in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Paperwork yeah. got lost somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Weird. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was like when I was at Cannon, and again, I probably said this before, but I was my escort was at uh, uh, Bentwaters. And he was there in the early 80s. And we're heading towards the flight line. It's a black kid, staff sergeant, very nice. I said, uh, oh, you were you were Bentwaters when the UFO landed. He slams on the brakes. <laughs> I mean, and he turned gray. He I mean, he was, I actually, I mean, it was it was like I I, I told him I was I, I was seducing his daughter and his mother at the same time. I mean, it was. <laughs> I mean, it was that type of reaction. I mean, he was just blown away by by the fact that I I mentioned something that that he, he was involved in, even peripherally. Wow. And it's just, and he said, "You say one more comment, I'll have you escorted off this base." Do you understand me? I said, "Absolutely." Ooh. We didn't say another word the whole time. He took Don't me out to the flight know, line. But if they just played it cool and just be like, huh, or something along those lines. That yeah. we would think less of it than if they got all like uppity and like uptight like that. Like, don't you dare. Because then it's just kind of like, okay, well, obviously it had a nerve there. So, Or if somebody asked you, was that you, Lynn, running across the field naked last Friday night? <laughs> and if it was. Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. So maybe the wrong true. person to ask okay. that scenario, too. Uh, it'll, it'll be in the front page of the National Enquirer. Inquirer. Yeah, right. <laughs> Was it Thursday or Friday? Because it was both, really. Just uh, right. yeah. yeah. Wait, wait. It was it was a marathon. It went on for yeah. you know, like twenty six. You need hours. to be way yeah. more specific on my running. <laughs> wait, yeah. which week yeah. are we talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was probably me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this so. Friday or last Friday? Because <laughs> yeah, one of them. One of yep. them. Yeah, so. absolutely. Anthony's uh, here. Uh, hey, Anthony. Anthony right oh yeah, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be with uh, the unidentified S four guys. It should be fun. Yeah, and um, and I I sure and I sure in the hell hope it's uh, it's something really, you know, s substantial comes out of this. I mean, even even if it's just a nugget, hmm. but all, I mean, you don't need a whole lot. It's you know, it's like uh, Pavlov's dogs, you know. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, you blow the whistle, and they just, you know, we just start all drooling, and right. It's. But it's something that has to be done. I and mean, again, we, we'll know more tomorrow. That's for darn sure. Or right, let's put it this way: we will know something tomorrow, whether it's more or less. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm going to say it's going to be. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to say it's it's yeah. it, yeah, it's SSDD. Same stuff, different day. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, mean, I think uh, with what Lynn has brought up about the you know the. Uh, so is the whole thing going to be, this is a, an unclassified brief. Is the whole thing's going to be televised? It seemed including, like it. It seemed like it, but the, I mean, again, it's only two hours. So how much are they really planning on putting out there? Unless they just, if, if they just show the two witness witnesses with their stories up and that's kind of it, that's all they have time for really. If they're going to squash it into two hours. Right. Um, let me see if I can 
It's. Uh, I mean, and yeah. all of us know that our government has, you know, top of the line photos of what whatever is out there. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know when when uh, the first shuttle went up, and they were concerned about the tiles. They were, Mm -hmm. you know, and they really didn't have a way to, you know, they weren't going to do a EVA, and they didn't have any external cameras to, or even on the on the, uh, I I don't think the the Canadian boom uh, was ready yet. Yeah, and they were really worried. I said, "What happens if if we lost a lot of the tiles on the bottom?" And the Air Force came. Uh, came, call, got hold of NASA, and he said, "We've taken a look at it, and there are no missing tiles. You have like six that have small chips about the size of a quarter." I said, "How do you know that?" And they said, well, "We do, but we're not going to tell you how we know." <laughs> I mean, we have we have tracking systems out there that you know if they can see the size of a quarter, two hundred and some odd miles out in space on the bottom of a, of a space shuttle, then they had the ability you know, to look at other things that are flying around there because you know, we all know that there, there's stuff out there. And I think you know, there's, there's gotta be, there's gotta be an active uh, program of some sort to monitor things that go bump in the night. I mean, in the zip codes in Washington, D.C., it's 20201 through 20243 or 47. But starting about uh, 20236 for about six or seven uh, zip codes, those go to classified locations. And, that's, and that was one of the zip codes that was on Bob Lazar's W-2. That's probably why mm. the Admiral got so pissy with me. <laughs> Mm. You know, I've never been threatened by a two star before. I've been threatened by other people in the military, but not two stars. Um, and it was just, it was a unique experience to see this man. He was mad. And when he put Lazar's W2 into Shredder, I said, boy, that was, that was really telling. Yeah, you know, drinking on the job, Anza. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's just, that's that his container. Later. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought, it, I thought it'd be Jack Daniels. Yeah. <laughs> I, I make my rounds with different whiskeys from time to time. I, I used to, I used to be a scotch drinker. Uh, I used, I loved a good wine, but the day challenger blew up. I was in the operating room table at Mayo Clinic for 11 hours under anesthesia and going through nine and a half hours of brain surgery. Mm-hmm. And the net result is I cannot consume any alcohol. Oh, wow. Wow. Really? Just a little bit of alcohol will give me a, it will, will give me a scale of one to 10 will give me a 12 headache for a couple of days and oh, render, render me you know, useless. Other people have written, you know, consider me useless without me taking any alcohol, but it is, uh, <laughs> um, you know, it, it's something. So I have, I really haven't had anything to drink. I've had one drink in 36 years wow. and I wanted to see, you know, it was, it was my second date with my wife, no. the current one, not the ones before, but the current one. And, uh, yeah, what are you laughing at? Yeah. Just thinking about your collection. That's yeah. Uh... <laughs> well, yeah, you got you know, I, eventually you got to get it right. But I decided I'd love I'd love B and B. It's Benedict, Benedictine and Brandy, and it's like rocket fuel. And I, I had just this. Uh, oh, it is. If you haven't tried it, it's 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 really good. And I just had about half of it, and it wasn't a you know, Brandy sniffer. It was about you know that that much, and that not a whole lot. Maybe maybe a shot and a half, maybe two shots at the most. Mm-hmm. And for two days, I was I mean I was literally laid up with it with a headache that wouldn't go away. Yeah, so, Oof. and that's one reason. And I I think if I decided to just stay drunk all the time, I wouldn't have to worry about the headache. But then I'm not as I'm not as functional as I am. <laughs> and I gotta really I gotta really watch my balance because when they when they took the tumor out, they mm. severed my auditory nerve. So I have I only have balance in one ear. Oh wow. Um, and if I get out of a chair and I turn at the same time, I'll fall down. Oh really? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And there's there's some smokable products that'll give me the same effect too. So I got to. Yeah. What yeah. could those be? 
Yeah, you know, you know like smoke pork and you know, smoke, <laughs> smoke you know. pork. Yeah, of course. Yeah. What yeah. else did you think he was talking about? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's for medical purposes only, it's, so uh, it's, it's not for it's Medi- not for medical not for pork is the best. Yeah, I, you know, pork. absolutely. That was a, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, was a, that was a great. It was a great save, Jim. I like. I love that. Of course, yeah. smoke pork. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh! I mean, you know, the one thing I mean, I, I I've been around for seventy seven years now, and I, and it's the the one thing that I've I learned early on is you got to laugh a lot, mm-hmm. and you really you really yeah smoke pork down yeah, that's right I love it, <laughs> and um, yeah you really can't take take life way too seriously. I mean, there's some people out there they have a burn their butt. I don't care what, if it's about UFOs or UAPs or if it's about, you know, the, you know, the color of something or, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, they, they're always irritated. Oh yeah. I, you know, I'm, I almost always have a, a, a smile on my face because I can find humor in almost anything. I mean, even stuff you go, Oh my God. I can find something humorous about yeah. it, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. And, and that's always and that's always got me in trouble, uh, mm. because I do have and my 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 mind works to the you know to the the, the degree that so, you say something outrageous or I see something, I don't even think of what comes out of my mouth. All of a sudden, it just comes out, and it's usually right on. I mean, a lot of people go, "Well, you said that," <laughs> so. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. I'm going to interrupt really quickly. Vincent, they had their baby today at 3.55 a.m. today. Oh, Six nice. Months, 15 yes. ounces, 20 inches. Alice Ophelia. That's so sweet. I love it. Oh, Congrats. Name. That's exciting. That's so exciting. And, and the whole world knows now. That's so. true, right? Welcome to the world, Alice. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. That's, That's amazing. amazing. Um, all right, we have a question. I'm going to put this to both of you. Can you ask your guests, well, guest and co-host, uh, about his thoughts on AI and intelligent life? Okay, so do you guys have any thoughts on AI and intelligent life? Well, don't look at DC f- looking for intelligent life. That's for sure. <laughs> Definitely and artificial, truth. though. It's a- truth, yes. And I, th- I think artificial intelligence, I mean, that's a genie that we've t- it's come out of the bottle Mm. And maybe we should try to put it back in. I mean, because once, I mean, we, you see Terminator. Hey, we're closer to Terminator than we, you know, than than, than, we, than not. Mm-hmm. Yes. And one of the, you know, one of the uh, theories behind, uh, you know, people like Bill Gates, they want to reduce the world population down to 500 million. Mm-hmm. But you got to find a place to bury 700 and, you know, you know seven and, you know, billion five hundred million people. That's going to be a challenge. Yeah. But it's um, you say, well, what's what's going to happen when all the worker bees are dead, or what, all the you know, and only the elites are on, around? I said that's what artificial intelligence is. You have robots that are going to build robots. You have robots that are going to do the thinking. You're going to have uh, artificial mm-hmm. intelligence robots. You know. You know you know, t- you know, tending the fields, uh, building houses. I mean, now you can uh, you can uh, put into a uh, a computer the, you know, the design for a house, and you mm-hmm. can, you can have it made of concrete, or may, or maybe it's you know it's it's made with a three D printer. You can build a you can build a whole machine without owning a machine shop. I mean, it's and artificial intelligence is is what's bringing us to that point in the world. But if if we make if we make the machines smarter than you and I, now we can't compare that with with DC because you know I can get a tink, I can go get you know an erector set or Tinker Toys and and come up with something that would baffle a few people there in DC. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know if if all of a sudden we have machines that can outthink us, can outperform us in everything, you know the, you know the only you know that you know that's that's where the, that's where the ter- absolute terror can lie because all you have to have is a disgruntled programmer and they say okay everybody with green eyes must die and you could you, you could have 
bots go out there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or mine's are hazel. Mine's hazel most of the time, but if I'm in a really good mood, they are very can, green. Can make mine red real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that but that's that's where that's where the I think that's where the danger runs in. Mm. And more and more science fiction movies are proven to be uh Windows, windows to the future. Yeah. I mean, Soylent Green with Charleston yeah. Heston. It happened in 2022. We're running out of food for babies. We're running out of food for, you know, in the stores. You know, we have killed a mil allegedly a million people just in the U.S. alone with this virus, this mm. uh, COVID. Um and like say you are what you eat. I mean, you just oh god. <laughs> but, but there's there's a product out there's called soil soylent and, and it's called soylent green. I've seen advertisements for it. And and people said, Do you realize what you're trying to sell or what you're trying to promote? <laughs> I mean, that's that's what a horror movie was made out of, uh, you know, back was in the sixties or seventies. I mean, it was a long time ago I when Soylent that was Green late came 60s. out. Yeah. yeah. And well, if you're talking about like the it's it's the it's the mix, right? Soylent. They just call it Soylent. Yeah. Because I've seen it. It's the contents of it. It's supposed to be the literal all your vitamins, all your proteins, all your fats, all the stuff. And, and some of your friends. <laughs> don't don't question the sources, Jim. It's uh, <laughs> it can't all be smoked pork. It's uh, it's yeah. good for so, you. Good for but you. it's basically it's it's whatever your body it's whatever the basic needs of your body it's the most basic form of easily digestible powder drinks like a protein powder kind is of this thing. one that's made from that like green algae or is that something uh, different i don't know what actually goes into it okay. which of course is the mystery of the uh, problem yeah <laughs> and, and but, you got to uh, do something with seven and a half billion people right yeah <laughs> is is uh 416 bitcoin uh can you ask you guys about uh the thoughts on ai and intelligent life i i kind of took it to mean uh, is the intelligent life we may have seen or or probable to soon meet if we haven't mm. yet an artificial intelligence yeah uh, that's a good question too yeah which uh if you look at it from like the the fermi paradox kind of thing mm -hmm. of you know other races out there how come we haven't met them yet I think if that first one you to meet would be like an all artificial intelligent robot kind of race, that would be the most frightening because somebody somewhere at the beginning made them. Hmm. Well, what happened yeah, to them? <laughs> I, I saw I saw a YouTube video t today. It was I think it was posted on Facebook where Disney has their robots that they're going to you know start putting in a lot of their exhibits. This one was on a flying trapeze doing uh, flips and, and landing exactly where they're supposed to land. And, you know, it, and it, it didn't have a, a skin on it. It was, it was just, it was just the Terminator, yeah. but, <laughs> but that's what it was. I mean, you look at it, is it that, that could be really frightening when, when you think uh, about it. When Skynet that. does become self-aware, that guy with the hockey stick over at Boston Dynamics is going to be the first to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then I'm running because <laughs> it's not far. <laughs> oh, is it right around the corner? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like 45 minutes, but relatively speaking, as far as well, the yeah, planet the, goes, yeah, it's the, right around the corner. The fireball will go out that far, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. You will yeah. be engulfed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, but but artificial intelligence, uh, there's there's an awful lot that can go wrong with that. Again, oh, yeah. all you'd need is you know some guy who, uh, maybe his wife cut him off, or maybe her husband cut him off, or 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 whatever, or just is that time of the month? Excuse me, Lynn, but it's uh, and they're just having a bad day, <laughs> and they're 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 putting stuff in uh, in in programming some some type of device. Well, I'll show those bastards. They, you know, they hit an enter key, and all of a sudden, you have a bunch of killer bots out there that can transmit. Let's say that they they're going for facial facial recognition, and that's another area that, that artificial intelligence uh, can be an absolute nightmare. Because if all of a sudden they decide 
we don't, Lynn, we don't like your face. So anywhere there's a camera oh, wow. and your face shows up, you're going to get harassed or we're yes. going to, we're going to block you access to all these places or whatever. I mean, all it is is entering some ones and zeros into a, uh, you know, into a package, uh, you know, packet, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. embedded it in some type of, of uh, intelligent device. I don't think any any devices should be more intelligent. Maybe quicker, but they should not be more intelligent than you and I. Yeah, I mean that's the trouble. I mean, I remember. So I like Avi Lowe, but when I was talking with him last, I think it was last summer, we were talking about going out into space, and he, you know, is very much of the mindset that he thinks we should be putting self replicating AI into space instead of human beings. And so he was talking about it. He was like, imagine this, you know, you can send this, this technology out there, um, say they have replicators of some kind with them, um, where they can now replicate themselves, they can replicate their own parts, they can go to another planet, you know, like kind of uh, not occupy, well, maybe occupy is the right word, I don't know, but like they can go and establish themselves on a planet, then they can travel some more, travel to another planet, all the while they're replicating themselves more and more. And I was just like, that's kind of terrifying because how do you get to the point when they stop, when they realize enough is enough, or do they just keep going at infinitum? Like, until they run like, out of star what, system. Right. What, like, how once far it, is it going to go? Once it gets to that point, it's too late. Right. It's too late. And that's, yeah, that's, that's why they're, I, you know, they say, well, maybe we should have some legislation. No, I think people should sit back and think of what the yeah. Don't don't look at the positive side. Look at what can go wrong with this type of intelligence. And if all of a sudden they can replicate it themselves, they can fix themselves. I'm talking about machines, mm -hmm. regardless of how complex they are. Uh, then we're not needed anymore. Matter right. of fact, we're we're in the way because you know we have machines that can do everything the human can do. So do we need humans anymore? Right. No, no. If you get rid of all the humans, you know, you still have pollution because they got to build something. Uh, they'll create something, but you're not, you're not going to have, you're not going to worry about, you're not going to spend money on diseases or famine or, you know, let's just let everything go, you know, go back to nature. Mm -hmm. uh, and, the hell with the hell with mankind, and that's that's where it could head. It could be that a hundred years from now, or less, mm -hmm. if the if the genie really does get out of the bottle with with artificial intelligence, whether it was created by us or recreated you know, created by uh, an alien entity, mm -hmm. and and for all for all we know, there there are people there are things walking around this earth that look like you and I that aren't from here and they're not human they're not a humanoid they're not a, a biological entity they're a machine and that can be that can be you know totally frightening so as that as artificial as... artificial intelligence is it could be good for some things but i think the uh the, once the genie is all the way out i think he has his toe out there and he's you know he's really getting comfortable with uh with the world, but if if we don't put the cork in it or some type put some type of filter on it to keep it from going rogue, you know, like uh, I Robot, the movie with Will Smith, uh, right. that's what could go wrong. I mean, you you could have you could have this all powerful uh, computer decide it knows what's best for the world, and it was best for the world or fewer humans. So it's it's again it's science fiction becoming science reality, and that's that's one of the things we have to really worry about. Mm. I don't think I mentioned it on this on this uh, uh, program, but I've mentioned it before. My dad had an IQ about one hundred and seventy five, and he was he oh, was wow. a, a genius. Mm. Not a very good dad. I I idolize my dad, and I admire my dad's brain. But oops. But he wasn't. He wasn't what I would call the uh, the Wally Cleaver type of dad. You know? Yeah. Um, but he 
but he's, you know, he's, he told me that, uh, you know, he was, he was concerned about, uh, think, you know, things that go bump in the night when he was, I think it was 11 or 12. And that's, he was born in 23. So this is mid thirties. My grandmother took his, his Buck Rogers stuff away from him, his, his comic books and his books with Buck Rogers and, and, uh, uh, you know, the, you know, the rest of the science fiction writers of that, of that era. And my father said, mother said, before you die, man will land on the moon. Well, the day Neil Armstrong stepped on the moon, the phone rang, my dad picked it up and it was his mother apologizing for not believing him. Hmm. And, you know, you look at, you know, the, the, the more, you know, you know, look at almost any scientific, scientific, or fiction, science fiction, a book, you know, written in the last hundred years, and you look back during the time it was it was written, it was pretty outrageous. Mm -hmm. And then, but it's come to pass. I mean, every everything that you've we've seen, like like Ben Rich told me, and I got to keep referring to to Ben because he's, as far as I'm concerned, he's the kingpin on my beliefs in UFOs, both in the letter he wrote to John Andrews and the conversation that we, multiple conversations we had, but the, the one that's most important, the last one, mm -hmm. when he said, we have things that are 50 years beyond what you can comprehend. I, like I said, I can comprehend a hell of a lot. Same here. <laughs> said, if you see movies like yeah. Star Wars or Star Trek, we've been there, done that, or decided it wasn't worth the effort. That's crazy. Now, how, how do you make a statement like that and then, you know, I said, well, you want to expand upon that, Ben? And he said, no. And then he had the nerve to die on me 10 days later. And that really irritated the heck out of me. I mean, he was he was supposed to give me an interview. Mm. And he had agreed to an interview, but he had to get his book done with Leo Janos first. And before I can get out to L.A., he was uh, hospitalized with esophageal cancer. So it was. Uh, but that right that right there just tells me that. It's out there, you know, if they aren't us. And, you know, the, the UFOs that are seen with a red and green light, that's got to be man-made. Yeah. I, I don't think alien beings flying either robotic or crude spacecraft really give a damn whether it has a red and green light on the, right, on the correct side of the, of the craft, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. But those that without them, I mean, there's two... It was all ninety nine percent of them are are you are fake or or swamp gas or uh, maybe they were made at Area fifty one or whatever. Okay, that could be a correct statement. But what about that one percent? All it has to be is one out of a trillion mm -hmm. events of the last thousand years. All it has to be is one that we can prove what had it was from from an alien source. And there's just way, there's just way too many planets out there. I mean, there's, there's billions of earth like planets in the inhabitable zone with liquid water. And this is, this is from the national science foundation. So the, you know, we can't be the only ones. I'm sure, Jim. I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's, there's people say, well, you know, God created us and I believe in God. So yeah. So what prevented them from creating other worlds? There aren't any, you know, there aren't any rules that say, hey, if you made one world and you know, one group of humanoids, you can't do another one. Well, if he's making the rules or she's making the rules, who cares? I mean, it's we can't be the only ones. There's just too much vastness out there to be the only ones. Agreed? Oh, yeah. Uh, Jim, do you do you think uh, just a personal belief that do you think we have ships out there amongst the stars already right now from Earth that we may according according to to Ben uh, yes yes I mean for the for, the retired president of Lockheed Skunk Works to, you know to to feed me a line of bull I think that's way beyond him. And you know he's he said it more than once. I mean he said it at UCLA. We have the ability to take ET home, but our federal government, our government, will not allow that information to be made public. They could cure they could cure 
all diseases. They could, you know, we could have a pollution-free uh, energy. I mean, what was Tesla working on? Not Elon's Tesla, but Nikola Tesla. Uh, when he said the energy is there, all you have to do is, I mean, and it's very simple to extract it from, you know, from the air or from the environment. And it's, and it's, and of course, all all his you know, his what eighty some odd uh, trunks filled with all of his documentation and stuff like that. Oh, it's just sort of disappeared shortly after his death. Where did it go? Oh yeah, it went into that big, you know, thirteen square mile warehouse that's underground yeah, that's, somewhere. That uh, you, know, is, you know, all you is, have is yep. all you have is you know, Ernest Borgnine. Borgnine is the one who's you know, who's the gatekeeper there. And, uh, Ernest Borgnine. Yeah, I figure what mo movie he was in when he was. Uh, uh, it had to do. It had to do with aliens. So, but it, it's. I don't remember what, what that would have been. No, he was he was a gatekeeper of the CIA, and I, and it was in a movie. I just I saw it. I've seen it about three or four times, and I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. But it was a science fiction movie. I love science and, fiction. Yeah, but the stuff is there. It needs to be released. It needs to be released. So, so what's your prediction for tomorrow? Nothing. Probably so not day? much. Yeah. yeah, probably. Yeah, uh, I mean, because the if they're going to enter, they'll they'll probably have the eyewitness statements for coverage of the last uh, briefing, I guess, and maybe have a few minutes talking about the new program they set up and where they stand on that, which probably isn't that far since it's only been what five months at that. But you don't don't you think that this has been an ongoing thing within the federal government since Roswell? Oh yeah, uh, not publicly, of course, like this no. is. Yeah, but uh, which which you know, again brings up it's like why now after all this time of being you know squashing it down at every turn and then the last couple of years, hey, maybe, we're going to talk publicly kind of about this. Maybe they're maybe they're telling us that. Um, we got to become aware and maybe disclosure, true disclosure is right around the corner because it's very possible that the end result won't be positive or the end result will be incredibly positive. I mean, it's just, we don't know because right. we're not, you know, we're not involved in it. We're not, yeah, we're, yeah, we're not even participants other than, uh, we're yeah you know, we're we're hoping to get you know some stuff released. We're hoping that the, uh, the the caretakers, the custodians of this of this incredible information. I mean, it's it could be earth shattering again, and it, but it could also could cause a tremendous amount of turmoil. If yeah, you know, if all of a sudden your belief, and I, I again I've uh, talked about this in a couple of different places that. If all, if all of a sudden, the only reason you don't kill your neighbor because you don't want to go to hell, and if all of a sudden that firm belief in a supreme being, I be God or Buddha or whomever, um, if you know that you, you won't be uh, tortured for internal damnation for you know, breaking the Ten Commandments, any one of them, then... You can go on a rampage. What are they going to do? I said, I don't have a soul. Uh, you know, we're going to, you know, we're going to go to hell. You know, we're, you know, maybe we're living in hell right now. We don't know it. So what's going to keep me from, uh, uh, you know, from killing my neighbors or, or my kids or whom? It doesn't make any difference who it is. But if all of a sudden that uh, damnation, that internal, you know, in, you know internal, not internal, uh, e my, my mind just went. I hate it when my mind goes. It's going in about ten different directions right now. Right. Or 20 different directions. <laughs> These are big, heady topics. So yeah, yeah, and but uh, eternal damnation. Yeah, eternal damnation. That's you know not external, eternal <laughs> damnation. If you're not worried about that, then what's going to keep you from doing what in your heart knows wrong? 
Yep. With no uh, final judgment or uh, repercussions from it. Yep. I, I could see where that would cause a, a lot of people to just snap uh, with that realization. Uh, I've kind of wondered about the whole kind of uh, sped up process about this myself and just, you know, fanciful thinking. It's like, maybe somebody radioed ahead. It's like, hey, we're coming by with our really big ships that you're not going to be able to hide and we ain't going to try and hide it, just so you know. Yeah. We'll be swinging by in a couple of years with our, our big stuff. Uh, just just letting you. We're telling you because it's not like you can do anything about it. Kind of a thing. And yeah. uh, may, maybe they got to do that slow build. It's like, oh, you know, like, you know, a year from now, like, oh, we've received radio transmissions from uh, stuff that we discovered with the, the the new James Webb telescope. And it's, you know, recently discovered stuff that they knew about 5, 10, 1200 years ago. Who knows? And uh, it's basically it's like th basically something big's coming that they can't hide and they can't cover <laughs> up. Is, Sp is the speaking thing. about the, the James Webb telescope, I guess they got some, you know, they're some of their first images. And way better there, than and, expected. Oh gosh, yeah, that I mean, really blew them away. But when it when it was first put into uh, L two, I think it's what it's called, the location. Right. Uh, I put a post of it's the back of a removed before flight cover. That was you. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. The, the first images from the from the uh, the James Webb Space Telescope. That was and, pretty uh, funny. Right? We'll say hello to John Hudson. How's it Hi, going? Hi, John Hudson. Miss you. Thanks, thanks for visiting Miss us. You. And uh, yeah, but that's. Uh, <laughs> I thought that that was funnier in hell. But the, the, the fact hilarious. that everything everything has come together on that is, and everything's checking out. I mean, it it isn't like when the Hubble first went up. Ugh. Oh, they they ground the primary mirror wrong. What it was ground for, I honestly believe, the Hubble Space Telescope is a KH-11 spy satellite, mm. and they they redid the optics to point outward versus downward. I mean, you can read a license plate at, at eighty miles. Hmm. Yeah, we have. Yeah, you know, we had the ability on on some of the camera systems we have that, uh, you know, maybe you can even read the name tag or my name over here. Uh, from from altitude, yeah. You know, if we can go, if, if we can go up and take the look at the bottom of the space shuttle to say, hey, no, you haven't lost any tiles. Everything is there from the ground. Then, and that was forty years, almost forty years ago. Yeah. For the, you know, the first shuttle launch, so like eighty. Three uh, 80s, I think. Yeah. Oh, gee, another year, and, and it will be 40 years. Oh, my goodness, how time flies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, the only reason I say that is because I had my brain surgery on the on in 86. So I know it was, uh, you know, it was, mm -hmm. you know, quite a few. I think it was 81 or 82 when the first shuttles were, were being uh, released from the 747 to make sure they glide. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, so. the the Enterprise actually. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Oh, goodness. Um. Somebody, I think it was four sixteen Bitcoin. Hold on, let me see. Had an interesting comment talking about AI that I hadn't really thought about. I mean, I've always thought about the you know well um, you know once they realize that we're unnecessary, they'll take over and eliminate us, but. Humans will be in a battle against AI for energy. I hadn't thought about that aspect of it. Well, it, de it depends if if uh, if we do have access to uh, Nikola Tesla's all his works. Mm. We may not. We you know the, the energy may be all around us. I mean, supposedly he was pulling it straight. Just he had some way of bringing bringing it into one location. And then transmitting it out. I mean, because he he said that yeah. the energy is there. Mm -hmm. This is how you this is how you gather it. This is how you utilize it. And all that all that is locked up somewhere. And it's uh, and humans will be in a battle against AI. I don't know for about energy. I think the energy will be there. I think the energy is there. Yeah, already. Yeah. Right, it's, uh, with our access to it, right? right. Yeah, yeah. And it's, I did something today I didn't think I was going to do. I ordered some uh, LED 
light panels so I don't look like I'm either painted red <laughs> or orange <laughs> or blotchy white. So you, awesome. need, to, need to get some color changing ones. The kids there love them. Go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have my little ones. On. I always forget that my, they're like little amethysts. I actually do have some color change. Oh, there we go. Um, not that they make a big difference. Uh, yeah. I do have some color changing LEDs. I just never put them up. I don't know. I mean, and, and the, and the, and the other, the other thing we're going to, you know, we're talking about, uh, resources for, you know, for energy storage. There, hmm. I don't. I, you know, I, I, I list. I, I, I've been listening to almost everything that Elon Musk has been saying for the last ten years. I, mm -hmm. I've been just searching it up, and I, and I, I wonder if he's a reincarnation of Tesla. He does come across that way as uh, just a super genius, I mean, kind of misunderstood I mean, and kind of quirky. He lives in a fifty thousand dollar house in Boca Chica Beach. Wow. He travels. He'll stay at friends' houses. He doesn't own a car. He doesn't have a 747 or 777 private jet. He doesn't have any yachts. He sold all his property in California. And so have uh, over 170 billionaires have left California in the last five years. Hmm. And... Uh, Num nuts Newsome keeps raising taxes, and, and even more people are going to leave. I mean, I'm a third generation San Franciscan, and I wouldn't I wouldn't move back there under any circumstances. Wow. Uh, when I lived uh, way back in the in the late seventies, early eighties, a, a, a dear friend of mine was working for the banking system, got a huge, almost tripled his pay moved to San Francisco, where I think it was Bank of America, hired him away from uh, Northwestern uh, hmm. Bank. And we figured we'd never see him again. About a year and a half later, I run into him at the store. I said, well, are you back visiting? He said, no, I quit. <laughs> I said, what do you mean you quit? I said, I said everybody out there, you know, the only reason they're going to have anything to do with you is because you have something they need whether it's time or whether it's money or whether it's technology or whatever, if you don't have anything to offer, you're going to be ignored. You're going to, you're going to be, uh, uh, relegated to, you know, to, uh, third rate, uh, coffee clutches. Hmm. And, um, hmm. and I think, you know, I, and that's, that's the problem with the West, you know, the left coast. Is everybody's out for, you know, what can, what can you, what can you do for me? If you can't right. do for me, then I'm not going to have anything to do with you. And this guy left a $300,000 a year job to come back to Minneapolis at his first $75,000 a year job, which was pretty good money way back then. It isn't today because gee, I was, <laughs> when I, when I left uh, Las Vegas, I went and spent two days with uh, Sonny Conway there in Fresno Mm -hmm. And then I drove up to Beale and give my presentation on the history of the Blackbird. It was their intelligence group up there. I paid almost seven dollars a gallon for gas. That's crazy. And I'm a cheap bastard when it comes to you know, uh, paying for a room. Mm -hmm. I, I remember one of the first times I was in the 128 Loop in your neighborhood, Lynn. Mm -hmm. And the hotel I normally stood uh, stayed at. Uh, I think it was, this is back in the seventies. It was $34, which was expensive as far as I was concerned back then, yeah. but they didn't, they didn't have any, you know, they, they were booked up. There was some type of convention going on. So right down the road was the, uh, the Marriott. Mm -hmm. I went in there and said, uh, I called him up and said, you know, you have rooms available. He said, yeah. I said, uh, what are we looking for a single? It's at $129. I said, in the seventies. Does that include a goat and a young boy? Or just a room. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy, well, you're at the Marriott. I said, yeah, I need a place to lay my head to take a dump first thing in the morning and brush my teeth. He says, I'm not going to get in 100, I'm not getting $129 worth of satisfaction out of that amount. <laughs> and he was, and he was, I mean, he was, 
he was a counter 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 person. So I, you know, yeah. he wasn't making a whole hell of a lot of money. He couldn't afford to stay there. So busy. We're paying seven dollars for gas, hmm. and I have a four hundred and thirty horsepower car <laughs> that uh, I get twenty five miles to the gallon in it. That's pretty good, actually. Which is, which is actually really good. Well, my, my wife's car is a uh, Cadillac SRX. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a 2016. I got 22 in hers. <laughs> and I got a 2010 Grand Sport Corvette, and I get 25. And this wow. is going 80 to 100 and some odd miles an hour on my on my road trips. That's crazy. And... Um, but to pay to pay that much gas, but we you know, we were talking about energy storage, and I don't know how we how we got on this subject matter, but uh, <laughs> AI, AI, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and I mean, you drove by, you go by a car dealership right now, mm. there's no cars in the lot, and I could actually sell my Corvette today wow. for more than I paid for it seven years ago. Really? Wow. Six years ago, yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's ridiculous. I mean, it's just, um, everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I used, I used to stay at, uh, when I came down the coast, I'd go to Eureka and I have a, a, a my best friend's son lives there. So I always stop there to see, uh, to see Tony and I always stay at the, uh, uh, motel six. It's right next to, uh, you know, mm -hmm. a good, uh, you know, good breakfast uh, place in the morning. And it used to be forty dollars, and it was fifty dollars. It was a hundred and hundred and ten dollars last time I went through town. I just kept on going. I just told Tony, "I'll come by, say hi," and I got family down in the Bay Area. I'll go stay with them. I just I refuse to pay it. You know, I can pay it. It's not going to hurt me any. But you know, you have to you, know, you have to draw a line somewhere when you have principles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know a lot about principals. That was my homeroom when I was in high school. Was the principal's office? <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering how. Okay, where is this going? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't. You know, when it starts coming out, I have no idea. I pay no attention to where where my brain is taking me because I'm mean, I'm as I'm as surprised as you are with some of the stuff that comes out of my mouth. So it's amazing. I love it though. <laughs> Yeah, and like, like my TI told me in basic training, it's a good all you have everything going for you, but your mouth. So, <laughs> yeah, I do, I do run off on the mouth quite a bit. So, <laughs> it is. It's who I am. It's why we it's love you. I am. Yeah, it is. love it's you for it. Like you. Yeah, <laughs> and and again, I, there, there's people out there that, who are just so serious about some of this stuff we're dealing with, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's yeah, UFOs or whether it's art, art, artificial intelligence or uh, the environment or whatever. Just chill. I mean, step back, find something you can laugh at. I mean, I see some of these politicians or some of these do-gooders on the TV, and I just I look at him and I said, that's their life. What a bunch okay. of sorry, miserable bastards these people are. I mean, you know, they're, yeah. they're that wound up so tight, you know, that they almost can't have a bowel movement. And they <laughs> really are full of it. So maybe they should relax a little bit and let some of it go you know, leave, leave the bod. But oh. So what do you think uh, these people are going to do tomorrow when, again, there is nothing that comes out of this two-hour it, it's hearing. It's, it's going to be no quotes. different than than what happened uh, June of last year. Well, they lied to us again, you know, and it's rather than keep pulling our chain, I much rather they say nothing. Mm -hmm. True. Or when they yeah. finally get to the point where they have to say something, then it is full disclosure. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the only, I mean, there's there's so many people. Uh, that I've run into, or oh, you're a UFO crazy, okay, and they they sort of laugh at me. But but what's what's going to happen when all when when one lands on the uh, in the rose garden during a live you know, live uh, broadcast with someone there at the White House? It'll be I mean, CGI. It's, That's what everybody will say. That's ah, just CGI. Unless you were there. And and I and you know, part of me says, Oh, I, I hope it's like Mars attacks. But <laughs> <laughs> but that probably that probably won't happen. Uh, 
But what do you think about these like brainwashed acolytes of Lou Elizondo who thinks that he's doing all the stuff behind the scenes and working towards this congressional hearing and then we get a lot of nothing? Do you think they're still going to be like... I, 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 I don't want to speak. Them. I don't want to speak ill of anybody or you know say anything negative about anybody. But there's something that doesn't taste right with mm-hmm. his, what he, what he's saying. Yeah. You're, yeah, are you being are you be, being fed a shit sandwich sandwich? But they're telling you <laughs> it's really filet mignon. I don't know. Yeah, uh, but it's. It, it, there's there's something that's not that's not right. They have they they have too much access, where it, you know really it really is not deserving because they're not coming out with anything, and they and they're also uh, trying to put build up fear. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. I just I uh, I listen to what what they have to say, but I don't uh, I, I don't. I don't, yeah, I don't put any, any, uh, weight behind it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If they want to show me something that that's, that proves their point, that's one thing, but if they yeah. don't, you know, but just, yeah, to, I don't know. I, I, there's something that's not right. There's something that, that rubs me wrong. And I, uh, yeah. I would like, I would, I would, I would, Love to be in a position where I said, "Hey, these guys really know what they're talking about, or you know, they're really on our side." I but think I we all would. I think we all would. Yeah, but I don't. I don't think that's the case here. I really no. don't. No, I uh, agree. It's definitely not. And unfortunately, I think. I wonder if we're going to get more of like what we did with the uh, preliminary report. And honestly, I surprised myself with the pre- preliminary preliminary report because I was one of those people like. They said more than I expected them to say, which they did, because I expected nothing. And they said a couple of things in there that was interesting. But, um, you know, are we going to get more of this? Well, if you read between the lines of what they said, oh, they said a whole lot. You know, there's some right. people that just hold on to hope so much that I think they Ooh, almost nuggets. There's nuggets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but but if you if you follow behind a, a horse in a parade, there's nuggets there too. Oh yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's it's my perspective on things. I think that that. Uh, That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that cracked me up. I mean, just and again, I ha- and I and I have to. I have to. Mm. I, I want to believe, <laughs> and I just. <laughs> it's amazing. I love yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's. It was at one time in my life. I said, you know, maybe, maybe I could, maybe I can make a go at being a stand-up comedian because I do have a very very twisted sense of humor yeah um, i have yeah. i have really thick skin so i'm not easily offended mm-hmm. i mean there's a lot of there's a number of people out there that are that offend me but they're not offending me yeah. as a person yeah um, and i just i don't know I, I i try to look at things from every from every every direction you know i i have a lot of biases i think we all do Mm-hmm. We're human, uh, but it's just I ha- I have to, I have to you know, I try to go into anything I do with both my eyes wide open, and I yeah. I'm willing to listen to anything anybody has to say, and I do a lot of research. I've been around for a long time, and you know I have a pretty good uh, BS filter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I can I can tell when 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 someone is won't look at you straight in the eye and you're sort of looking around that oh maybe they aren't you know they aren't telling me the whole truth. And when I when I asked Jeff Babion when he was the vice president and general manager of the Skunk Works, and I, we were on the limo heading over to U two operation. I looked him straight in the eye. I mean, yeah, you know, we were two and a half three feet apart max. I said, and he looked me straight in the eye when I said, all right, what kind of Alien technology from UFOs that you know, you're using in any of your uh, programs, and I mean, I mean, he came back almost immediately. It wasn't, it wasn't a. It, I don't think it. I think he t- he was surprised I asked the question, but I think mm-hmm. I don't think he was surprised at the question. Yeah, 
He said, I have absolutely no knowledge of anything that, that Lockheed may have uh, used in the past. Mm-hmm. Said, because my job is to look to the future. Hmm. Said, and to my knowledge, it, it could be uh, compartmentalized uh, at a level that even I don't have access to. It may be a program that came and went. But he said, I have absolutely no knowledge of any alien out of this world, out of world technology that's being used in any of the, the projects that cur- are currently under either you know, design or evaluation or flight test or operation from the Skunk Works. Mm-hmm. And when the person will look you right square in the eye and, and say that, and, and it wasn't, and there wasn't, uh, he wasn't you know, jumped back and, and uh, blown away. I, I don't know if he was prepared. He, maybe, I'm sure they know, they're very well, well aware of my background and, and, <laughs> and, my, and my friends, uh, especially the, uh, Pro- probably the most interesting guy of them all who, who just left us was John Lear. Mm. Um, yeah. He was about as outrageous as they come. Uh, mm-hmm. You didn't, you didn't know if he was pulling your leg or telling you the truth. He could get <laughs> pissed at you and swearing at you, calling you every name in the book. And then you can see this twinkle in his eyes. It's a, there you son of a bitch. And he'd laugh, said, I got you. <laughs> so, but, you know, I don't, I don't even know how, I know how it, it actually came to be, but I was supposed to meet John Lear. John Lear mm-hmm. was supposed to be in my life. Yeah. Same with Bob Lazar. Mm-hmm. And I had to postpone my trip up to, to see Bob when I was up yeah. uh, Northern California, because between where I was and where he was, I'd have to drive through the mountains, possible snow. And mm-hmm. you don't drive snow with with my kind of car. No. <laughs> I mean, I only have this much clearance underneath my air dam up front oh that I've ripped off a couple of times, and that's $600. So oh, my God. It makes, I don't it makes do a very again. poor plow. <laughs> yes, it does. It does. Yes, it does. Um, and the other thing, when I first got it, it's so it's so low to the ground. I came up. I I, go, I went to the movies, and I went out to uh, take a look at the uh, the movie. I went looking for my car, and it's not there. I'd only had it less than twenty four hours. It, some some bitch stole my Corvette. Oh jeez! And it was a Mercedes sedan convertible, uh, far parking lot. And I was in the far parking lot. I could see I could see the Mercedes, but I couldn't see my car. I'm wandering around. I said, well, I got to walk home now. Shit. So as I'm walking down, I look, I look over and as, I, as I'm passing the, the Mercedes, there's my Corvette. It's so low. It was behind the car. And it oh, my God. <laughs> and I said, oh, God, no one, someone didn't steal it after all. Oh, my God. Yeah. So. Um, well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So do you guys think, and this question is definitely for both of you, because I'm curious on your opinions. Do you think now we're all we've all kind of said we think a whole lot of nothing is going to come from this congressional hearing tomorrow. But do you think there's any chance that they might say something? No. I mean, they may accidentally say something, but I think they've they probably reviewed what they're going to say, how they're going to say it, how long they're going to talk about whatever it is. In other words, you know, you know, we're going to, you know, we're going to be uh, uh, given a uh, a line of bull. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's going to amount to anything. I think they're going to, they're going to dance around the subject, and they're going to, they're going to you know, maybe uh, throw some innuendos out there, or some mm-hmm. well, maybe this or maybe that. But nothing we can hang your hat on. And that's what we need. We need, hey, I just want one good high resolution image of an alien. That would be nice. And or their vehicle. Yep. Mm -hmm. And maybe a 360 degree walk around and maybe even look inside. But even just one image, one Mm -hmm. sharp, proven not to be created you know, with, uh, you know, on, you know, with, uh, your soft, you know, software, you can make you can, yeah. I can do anything if I was talented enough with a computer, Yeah. whether it's, whether it's a spacecraft or whether it's a humanoid or whatever, but something that is be, beyond question 
And until they do something like that, it's gonna, it's just gonna be the same, uh, the same uh, crap, mm-hmm. day in and day out. But yeah. we just, we, you know, we can't, we can't. Uh, and and Terry Brown, I, I'm gonna, I, I, I beat on him all the time. I, you know, I, I <laughs> like when when Lear and I were uh, uh, had little red dots in our chest, and we finally, you know, gave our IDs to the uh, security people. This is at night, and I hear him said mm-hmm. when they they were trying to get move us out of the area around TTR, and I. Uh, we gave him our IDs. Gave, we went to uh, gave him someone on the south side of the fence. Went to the supervisor. He turns the lights on, and I hear, "Oh shit, it's good all in Lear." He was like, <laughs> "They weren't they weren't going to intimidate us out of the area," and mm-hmm. and that's that's what I bring to the table. I, I I'm willing to go out there, and it's it's harder for me today than it was 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, when you're 77 years old and you've been laying on the ground, you know, f- trying to get a good night's sleep, the hardest thing in the world is to get off the ground that next morning. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. It's not comfy yeah. for yeah. sure. And there's, and, and I, I would, I would love it if, if there were more, more people in the, in this community would take an, an active role in going out and snooping in and around area 51. Yeah. Snooping around Tonopah test range. Uh, there's uh, maybe even uh, you know you know western part of Utah, south of Interstate 80, where mm-hmm. where Dugway is. There's supposed to be some stuff going you know going along there. Yeah, uh, and the northeast corner, you know, extreme northeast corner of Nevada. There's supposed to be a new base up in that area. Uh, uh, something that, to rival Area 51. And Unless I have, you know, I'm not a pilot, so I don't have a, uh, I don't have access to an airplane. Michael Schratt's a pilot, and I'm trying mm. to convince him one of these days, let's let's take take an expedition, <laughs> go, you know, go to uh, Jack uh, Jackpot, which is right on the border of uh, uh, Nevada and Idaho on US 93. Mm-hmm. They have a 10,000 foot runway that runs parallel with the road. Wow. I mean, they get a lot of airplanes. They have a casino there, and this was this was before the Indian casinos. I don't think I don't know how viable it is anymore. But you know, see if see if the uh, the, the fixed base operator has an airplane to, that we can rent, and let's go fly over the extreme northeast corner of Nevada. Or if anybody's out there that's a pilot, whether a commercial pilot uh, or a private pilot, if you have the ability to overfly that area. If you can, you know, take some high quality images. I mean, not from a cell phone, but from a Nikon or a Canon out the window mm-hmm. to see what you can see. Because you know, when you go to Google Earth, there's a lot of it's up in that area is just pixelated. You know, it, it it doesn't really define anything. But there's supposedly a new base up there. And the reason I know my my one of my son's friends from high school ended up flying 135s. KC-135s, and he was flying out of Grand Forks, and he said, uh, hey, does your dad still go out on the fence line around uh, Area 51 and Tonopah Test Range? And my son James said, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. He said, well, there's, he says, he needs to look somewhere else. There's a, it's not in the Pacific Northwest, but it's near the Pacific Northwest. Pacific Northwest would be Washington, Oregon, and Idaho, a good part of Idaho. And John Lear had some uh, two friends that worked at Area 51 on a program. And when it became operational, they moved to Twin Falls, Idaho. Mm -hmm. And they told John that their commute time was about 90 minutes each way. So I figured that's 100 miles. And I got a map, 100 miles around uh, uh, Twin Falls, puts you right in the uh, northeast corner of Nevada. And that's where something, you know, I, I think that could be, you know, could be a place. Maybe that's, maybe once something leaves S4, maybe that's where they go. I don't know. Mm. Uh, maybe that's where the TR3Bs are flying out of. Because, mm. I mean, the, all the images and video I've seen on it, they, they, have, they all have formation lights. They all have a red and green light on their, on, uh, on their tips and a little white, you know, light, white light mm-hmm. in the nose area. Um, 
And that that would be a logical place for something like that to, to operate. And the other thing, there there are there are enough people that have come and gone out of some of these black programs. That's now is your now is your time to become famous or infamous, however the case mm-hmm. may be. Mm-hmm. And let's stop with let's stop with the crap. And let's you know you got your you have your pension, you have your money put away, and you, know, you have all this knowledge. It's time to share that knowledge. It's time to come out of yeah, you know, come out of the out of the darkness into the light and say, okay, uh, I don't have any, I don't have anything that I could show you, but this is what I did for thirty years, or this is what I did in my last ten years in the military. Because if 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 we in fact are flying these craft, they they're piloted by somebody or something. Hmm. You know, they could be they could be remote. I mean, they could be you know, like UAVs. Mm-hmm. Um, but if they're if they're occupied, if they're manned craft, then some of you know some of these people that maybe they're listening to our program tonight. That if you know that if you have direct knowledge of alien technology used in in our stuff, or that you have information and access to uh, alien alien craft, that you could shed some light on it. That's what we need, yeah. but it it's going to take it's going to take someone with a with a good set of cojones that are, you know <laughs> they, they aren't fearful of of what the feds are going to do to them. Because one of the, one of the things that that Bob Lazar told me he said one of the reasons he went public and and went very very you know in your face public is to save his life. Mm-hmm. And they, when they when someone when someone from our government pulls a gun and puts it to your head and threatens to blow your brains out, uh, that would have a very, very negative effect on my opinion of the federal government. Absolutely. And if, and if I thought maybe that uh, uh, the one way I can to protect myself, because I'm going to go out and say, if I get... No, no. I think Jim's frozen. Uh, then, I, then, I've been, then I've been taken out. Mm-hmm. And and I think it's one of the reasons why uh, they really left Bob alone because he he basically said, if I die under under sus- suspicious circumstances, it mm-hmm. proves that I was taken out because I'm not going to kill myself. I'm you know I'm too good of a driver to run off the road and and not hit anything but have a broken neck like Karen yeah. Karen Silkwood. Uh, there's a lot of evil people out there in our government. And, oh, I, sure. and it's, but we, but there's got to be at least a few, a few good people that are willing to you know, risk the slings and arrows, to come out and tell us like it is. Yeah. And that's what, and that's really what's needed. Yeah. And I don't just... think, and I don't think we're going to get it tomorrow as much as yeah. I like to say, Hey, yeah, we are, but yeah. But are their hands tied, though? That's the question, even if there are a few good people. Well, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've had Lockheed guys who worked on, you know, super classified programs at the time mm-hmm. uh, tell me, you know, I said, hey, you believe in UFOs? And they all say absolutely positively they do exist. Mm-hmm. And I've had that for the last 40 or 50 years when I've been, you know, quite, when I when I talk to someone that I know may have you know, may know yeah and and basically that's you know you want to expand upon that mm, i've really said too much as it is you know mm-hmm. type of uh, response so you got to keep pounding on them and if and if any of the, if any of the listening or viewing audience out there wants to become a a, a hero or a heroine uh yeah find time to go out to the fence line mm-hmm. Watch out for the camo dudes. There's, there's nothing that they can do to you uh, outside the perimeter of Area 51. I'm talking about the security people within Area 51. Yeah. The only people that can arrest you or, or haul you away are, are the county sheriffs, Lincoln, Nye, or Esmeralda County. Uh, they put up more signs miles out from the border on in Tipico Valley. Hmm. Uh, and I was out there with uh, a couple guys, and we we didn't we didn't want to push the issue because it wasn't my vehicle. Hmm. Uh, 
so I wasn't worried about losing the vehicle, but <coughs> I think I think uh, Dale would have a problem with his big, beautiful <laughs> $110,000 pickup truck. Uh, you know, this, this thing, it does everything but knit. I mean, it's... <laughs> uh, yeah, and oh. it's it's a white four door, uh, three quarter ton, four wheel yeah. drive. I mean, beautiful. It rides. I mean, ride beautifully. It's luxurious inside. Hmm. And but he felt that he didn't want to have to drive all the way to Pinoche and to retrieve it. It's about a hundred miles north of where we're at. Oh wow! Course, they're gonna charge you an arm and a leg. Hmm. Uh, but you know, there there's there can't be just Michael Stratton and myself, maybe one or two other people that are willing to go out in the desert and snoop on the government. So I am i can't do anything for you, but tell you what you can do, what you shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. But by all means, if you have the ability, if you have the time and you need the desire as well, you, you need to get out there. You need, you, you need to, you know, I've been doing this for almost 50 years. Yeah. I'm I'm to the point where I need some repla I I need some additional cav cavalry and I need some replacements just because I'm going to wear out eventually and not anytime soon but I will out you know wear out eventually and mm -hmm. there there's needs to be someone uh following my footsteps There you go. Here you go. You got to volunteer. Rin's volunteering. Me, I'm willing to go. I do it. Rin's Good. On it. Good. Never go out by yourself. <laughs> Uh, never knowingly break the law. Know where you're at at any given time. Uh, you can get your aeronautical maps that will give the longitude and latitude of restricted areas. Uh, today's smartphones, uh, they'll, they'll tell you within about two feet of where you're at on the planet. Uh, but be ready for some excitement. Be ready you know, with, with, a, with a good camera. You know, an iPhone's great for stuff that's in this room or maybe across the street. But when it's eight miles away, or it's you know it's thirty thousand feet in the in the air, you're going to need something with some good glass, with some good resolution. Uh, and you know, I'm very tempted just because the higher you know the higher uh, uh, DPI on the new you know, the new Nikon, the eight fifty. I mean, it's up to forty five megapixels or whatever it is. I have a, a 610 that's only about 24 megapixels. But I started off with a D90, which was about four. So it's, you know, it's it's gone up quite a bit. And every year they come up with something new and, and exciting. But we need we need the people, we need the soldiers, we need you know the the uh, the worker bees to go out there and and do something. There you uh, go. Got a couple of people volunteering there. Yeah. They'll do it. <laughs> that. you know, everybody knows where Area 51 is. Now, the, the best viewing of Area 51, if they're going to keep us off the top of the groom range uh, or you know, shadow you, there's you know, there's places you can go on the north side out, outside of Rachel on the mm -hmm. on the, uh, the the road to the uh, uh, bombing range. There's roads that go off. There's an old road that goes out to the groom range. You go down there. They have sensors. Uh, they'll they'll know you're going, and they'll send in the white pickup trucks to keep an eye on you. Again, there's nothing they can do to you. You're on public lands, so you can go tell them to pound sand. You can say it nicely because they have guns. Right. Uh, but I usually have. I usually carry a 357 when I'm out there. But it has birdshot in it, primarily for snakes. Yep, I was about to say you got to have a snake gun out there. Yeah, and if depending on when it is or the area it is, I have some Kevlar chaps mm -hmm. that I've used. Uh, you can you know, that will protect you because yeah, if you get bit by a Mojave Green and they're aggressive, I mean that's a that's a rattlesnake, and you know, there are twenty seven I think there are twenty seven species of rattlesnakes in the United States. And the only state that has all 27, of course, is Arizona. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we've had some Western Diamondbacks in our yard, some big ones. Oh, wow. And uh, call the fire department. They're there about five minutes, and they take it, and they bring it up in uh, Mount Lemon and let it loose so oh. I can bite a, you know, so I can bite a camper up there versus uh, yeah, <laughs> the residents in the suburbs. Hey, so. ra hashtag rattlesnake lives matter. 
Yeah. 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 Camp yeah. in the wild, you take your chances. Yeah. Sure that. Sure. And, and all the time I've been out there, I've only seen one snake. Doesn't mean there there weren't a hundred of them within a, mm. ten feet of me. Uh, you know, I've seen coyotes. I've seen, you know, uh, the f- most fascinating thing was we were at Tonopah Test Range, and there was a, a a herd of antelope running, and they weren't even breaking their stride as they went under the fence, mm-hmm. full gallop. All of a sudden, they head down, boom, and they just keep on going. I mean, they wow. didn't slow down one bit, mm-hmm. and. And if someone really wanted to get into Area 51 without getting caught, the best thing to do is come in from the south, but come on horseback. Hmm. There's There are wild horses all over the desert. Are they really? So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I When I was when Stu and I were on the fence line at TTR, uh, here was it three years ago, two years ago, uh, we were, we, were, we we had our encampment there. I had camouflage netting. You couldn't see my car from from about a hundred feet away. Oh wow! It was it blended in beautifully. But we're sitting in there, and all of a sudden, a, a stallion with three mare, mares mm. came up, and the stallion came came up within about a foot of Stewart, sniffing on him, and he just just sort of sit there and look. Oh. I mean, you can look at him, and they were just curious. Yeah, amazing. But, yeah, but they're beautiful creatures. Mm-hmm. But they're but they're but they're wild horses. And uh, so what you do is you get a horse. It has to go be bare. You have to be bareback because if they see a horse out there with a saddle, they know well it probably is a human attached to it somewhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and but go out there on on horseback and just casually walk. They have sensors. They 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 also have, they also have sensors that can smell humans also. But they have uh, sensors that can that can they know if it's uh, by the by the uh, the the walk you know, walking through the desert whether it's a human whether it's a coyote or whether it's a, a cow or a uh, a horse. That's crazy. Because it's also open range. So if you want to if you want to do that, that's that's one way to do it. And the other thing, if you're going to go out in the desert, regardless of where it's at, whether it's northern, the extreme northeastern Nevada, and that's where I wish someone who lived locally or close could go investigate. Um, I'm always bring about that too. <laughs> always bring more water than you think you need, oh, yeah. and then double it. Yep. Mm-hmm. You leave without food. You can't, you know, for a couple of days out in the desert. If you don't have water, you're you're in trouble. You're in big trouble. So, wow! My gosh, we made it past the bewitching hour. I know it's so yeah. crazy. It's it's time it's, flies. It, it is time flies when you're having fun, and I thoroughly I thoroughly enjoy my Monday evenings. So, oh, I do too. I, oh, I, I want to I want to thank Lynn for for bringing me on as as a co-host or you know crew member yep. with a very good <laughs> lead. <laughs> and Enzo, thank you for, for for coming. It was you know fun seeing you in Vegas. And yeah, now, where, where is where is home for you? I uh, am just outside of Wichita, Kansas. Oh, poor dear. And I <laughs> and I and I drove to Vegas. Oh, I I drove eight hours to Denver and picked up uh, Thin Lizzy Borden, which you may have seen. Uh, she was yep. helping out Dave with the hair. And uh, picked her up in Denver, and then we drove 12 hours from Denver straight into Vegas. Wow. So we, we passed through all through, you know, that section of Utah and everything like that. So it was an uh, amazing drive, mm. just a really long drive. That was <laughs> yeah, I, I, know, I know the feeling. So Goodness. are we going to call it a night? I think so. I think so. Well, thank well, you. We're, we're, all, lo- we're, all looking, we're, we're all looking forward to for disappointment for tomorrow right. <laughs> <laughs> and and if 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 we're not disappointed no, no one will be more thrilled than myself and right. i just yes. i think it's important that uh let's let's push the let's push the envelope let's push the issue again uh everybody out there keep your eye you know keep looking up uh don't yeah. You know, well, thank you, Arden. Uh, and it's we need people out there looking. We need people out there, you know, mm-hmm. harassing the security people around Area 51 and and uh, Tonopah Test Range. 
and elsewhere, anywhere else that you may, there may be some, uh, some strange activity, some supernatural activity. Uh, what, yeah, and, and then when you, when you do find something or you know someone who's willing to go out and do it, if you want to contact me, I can, I can tell you exactly where to go, how to get there. Uh, you know, I gave my presentation in, uh, in, in Las Vegas at the MUFON function last year. And I was the last speaker. I thought it was, I thought everybody would be gone. And it was still about 350, 400 people there wow, when I did my right. talk. I even got a standing ovation, which surprised the hell out of me. I think they're, they're waiting me, they're waiting for me to fall off the back of the stage like I did up in <laughs> Disclosure Con. Well, that was an experience. <laughs> I'm giving a presentation. I'm back. And my pointer was, wasn't working. So I'm up there pointing to the screen. And I didn't realize there's about three feet from the end of the stage to where the uh, screen is. And I'm just walking, all of a sudden I just disappear off the stage. <laughs> and I find myself on the floor. I fell about 30 inches, 36 feet, 36 inches or something like that. And didn't, didn't pull anything, didn't strain anything. I got right back up and just went back up in the stage. I mean, everybody went running because here's this old white haired guy. <laughs> and, and I, what I, I, after the fact, I, I, I said to myself, I should have gotten up there and said, now that I have your attention and then gone out from there. But it, it yeah, you're supposed to do the stage diving off the front of the stage. Into the <laughs> crowd. It's it's not... mosh, mosh pit, if they call yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Where they can catch you. Yeah. <laughs> but I want to, I want to, Enzo, I want to thank you for your time. Lynn, it's always a delight. I Thanks. look forward to my Mondays and uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. <laughs> what, what time does that start again tomorrow, Lynn? 9 a.m. Eastern. 9 Eastern. That's so it only early. goes 9 to 11 that's, from what they're saying. Yeah, that's a little early for me to start drinking, but you might need there's to. There's always yeah. exceptions. So. Yeah. Yeah. So well, I, I don't think that tomorrow is going to be a, a whole lot of advancement for, you know, mm -hmm. capital D disclosure, but uh, yeah. I don't feel that's necessarily a step backwards either. No, I think it'll just kind of, we'll be right where we're at. Yeah. Which, uh, to be fair from just like several years ago is much further than I imagined we'd ever be. I, I'm shocked. We're, we're I mean, it, when military, when military pilots can talk about their encounters Back in you know back in the eighties and nineties, boy, if you said I chased Whoa. a UFO in my F fourteen or my F eighteen, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're chasing the desk for the rest of your you, career. You have you have you have your two hundred one file, and you, know, you have a little picture of a jackass up there. He said we got a real joke on our joker on our hands. Mm -hmm. He believes in UFOs, so uh, everybody be be safe, stay healthy if you can, mm -hmm. uh, and enjoy life. You know, we, you know, we're not on this planet that long, some of us longer than others, mm -hmm. and get as much joy out of it as you can, you know, whether, you know, whether it's a, a fun car or whether it's a uh, delicious uh, you know, steak dinner somewhere or uh, a, a handsome uh, boyfriend or husband or you know, a, a date with Christy Brinkley for me. And, uh, <laughs> She's my age, I guess. So uh, she yeah. still looks amazing too. Yes, oh, she does. does. Yeah, yeah. Right. Of course, I do too. I'm, I'm such a oh, handsome bastard. Yeah, as, as you should. Dashing, dashing, yeah. young man. Yeah. yeah. So it's all that but, smoked pork. That's true. Yes, yes. <laughs> some, smoke something. So again, you take care. You have a wonderful evening. What's left of it? Uh, Lynn, again, it, it's always a pleasure. And so it just, yeah. uh, it, was, it was fun seeing you. I was, I was delighted you were Great able to you know, come on, uh, come on board tonight. And yeah. I'm going to be passing through Wichita probably sometime this summer. <laughs> I'm and sorry. I, yeah, well, so am I, but I have, I have a number of friends there that, that call Wichita home. And I'll give you a buzz. Sounds great. You know before I go, because uh, I usually go from here to Sholo, uh, where Doc, Doc Skinner is. Then I go to Albuquerque, where my friend Stuart Brown is. He's uh -huh. from Popular Science. And Steve Douglas, who's uh, he's, he's assistant news director now with the ABC affiliate there. He's one of the interceptors. He's the one who got the uh, American Airlines. Something, a UFO just flew in front of us at high speed. Because hmm. he, he, he monitors all radio transmissions. And then I... Uh, I usually stay, you know, stop them in Wichita because I have uh, 
guys I've known for 50 years uh, call Wichita home. One worked for flight safety. Don yep. Logan's a retired POW. Mm -hmm. And, um, and he's a Mustang person. He has uh, every year he goes out and gets the hottest uh, Ford Mustang, white Ford. I don't know, but is it found on the road dead? Fix or repair daily? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, give us a give us a call. We can meet up somewhere and uh, that would be fair. A few tales. Yes, and uh, and then I stop in I stop in uh, Kansas City, friends, and then it's. A good six hours home from there, Minnesota. That's I I claim Minnesota is home. I know it's something I would never have thought of when I was a kid, when I grew up in the Bay Area, but Minnesota is my home. And so in the Midwest, it's the people. They're wonderful. They are. Uh, and I can't say really bad things about Wichita because they do have some, you know, they've some credible airplanes have come out of oh, Wichita. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And, the uh, and, uh, doc, the B twenty nine, was buzzing around the other day. Oh, he was. Uh, it's like, yeah. like yeah. It's just yeah. there's no mistaking hearing those engines because you, you can hear them. I'm I'm kind of southeast of uh, the airfield the, of McConnell, uh, where it's on the other side of there, and I'm on the southern flight path, and there's no mistaking that the rumble of those engines roll, and it's like you you got to run to the window and watch it. Just I know when, when Fifi came into Minneapolis at our, our unit, uh, had been at Oshkosh, I was, you know, it was the first time I'd really been in a B-29. And here's the strategic bomber, World War II. It has a smaller diameter than a DC-9. Mm. It has a nine-foot diameter fuselage, and that's it. It's tiny. Yeah, it's it's really a tiny cool. airplane, but with, with uh, four mass with the R-3350s. That sounds right. I don't know off the yeah. top of my head. Yeah. So, all right, we're going to call it a night. All Everybody, right. you all have sweet dreams. Think positive thoughts. And if you see something, say something. Gee, I've heard that before. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> you take care. I'm hungry. I'm going to go have dinner. Yep. And, uh, for, and so, for a little man, wonderful, wonderful evening, wonderful day. Yeah, good, a good time as usual. As yep. usual. Always. Always. Thank Have you. Have a good night, everybody. I'm going to say right. adios. And uh, you can see Area 51 behind me. Mm -hmm. That's recent. That's not even a year <laughs> and a half old. So, all right. You take care. That's good. And Have I'm a good night, here. everyone. All right. Bye bye. <laughs>